My sister has always been baby crazy, while I had always been on the fence about being child free. While we were growing up she would dream about being a stay-at-home mom and having three kids, while I would say that I wanted to travel and not have any responsibilities. I was very adamant and my mom accepted very early on that I probably won't have kids and that my sister would be the first to have a child in our family. My sister has been trying to have a child for the past couple of years with no luck. They are undergoing some treatments. Everything went ate crap when I found out that I was pregnant. I told my mom and I told her that I wasn't sure what I was going to do. She told my sister. My sister spoke to me. She reminded me about why I have always said that I didn't want kids. She told me that having kids is something that I should be 100% sure about. Me and my partner had a long discussion after that. In the end, we decided to keep the baby. I told my sister first. She blew up on me. She told me that I didn't deserve to have a baby as I have never wanted one. She yelled some really horrible things. She admitted that she had hoped that I would abort. She even said that I am probably going to have a miscarriage or stillbirth because there is no way that the universe was going to bless me with a baby instead of her. She kept this up during the entirety of my pregnancy. I cut off contact with her few weeks before my due date. She was becoming increasingly hostile and I didn't trust her around me or my family after that. The only few times I have seen her in the past three years was during my mom's last days and funeral. My sister left me a message recently and said that she had a stillbirth. She cried and begged me to help her as she didn't have anyone else. I sent out a message saying that I was sorry for her loss. She again asked me if wasn't even going to help her. I told her that we haven't been sisters in a long time and it's not fair that she is expecting me to help. She just said that I am cruel person and hung up. For the past week, I have been receiving a lot of messages. Sometimes, she just begs me to help. Sometimes, she yells at me for not helping her. I haven't responded since the initial exchange. Am I the idiot here? Not the idiot. Well her trauma is real, so is yours, and she's been the cause of so much misery to you that it's probably in your best interest to stay low contact until she can get through her pain and talk to you without being hostile. I'm sorry for her loss of her baby, but I'm also sorry for your loss of a supportive family structure. I'm having trouble with this one. Your sister was nasty and cruel, she wished death on a child. Now she's going through what she wished on you. But losing a child is the hardest thing anyone can go through. My nephew died of cancer a little over a year ago. He was 10. My sister, she's still not okay. She probably never will be. I say not the idiot unless your sister sincerely apologizes for her previous behavior. Wanting a child and being unable to have one is a hard thing to go through, but that doesn't excuse the way she treated you. She was a complete monster. But now she's truly suffering and I feel for her, but it's not okay for her to expect you to just forget her cruelty. Not the idiot, to be honest, I think this is part of the problem with people defining themselves by future factors that are outside of their control. They just seem to break when it doesn't work out as planned. Her grief, anger, and identity crisis aren't your burden to bear. If she has no one to support her right now, except for the sister she's treated like crap, well sounds like there's a pretty good reason for that. So the situation goes as. I am, 29, marrying the love of my life, 27, next May. It is pretty much a big deal in the family, as this is the first wedding in my generation. I also have a sister, 27, who I am not really close to due to us being really different people, the reason for it being us reacting very differently to the same childhood traumas, but the relationship is not horrible either. My sister had a boyfriend, 27, for 9 years, they got together around 16 or something, I wasn't really around that time, and they had it great for most of the time. The guy and I got pretty close, as he was with us on all family occasions, we shared similar hobbies, and he helped a lot in our family issues by simply being there as an independent onlooker. Altogether, for long years a part of the family. They eventually broke up almost two years ago, which was understandable due to how much people change in such a young age, different views on having kids, etc. It wasn't even a problematic breakup, I talked to my sister about keeping touch with him, and she was fairly understanding about it, no fuss. Time passes and turns out my sister left him for a guy 19 years older than her, not a big problem, she was always had an old person's soul, which was not especially cool, but whatever. 
I kept in touch with her ex, even had better times with him without them being together, he handled it great, he moved to the same city where I lived, became an integral part of my group of friends, friends with my fiancé, all fun and games. And now the effective problem. I'm organizing my wedding and somehow during a conversation with my family I slipped that I have invited him to the wedding. That's when all hell broke loose. My sister simply stated that if he comes, she will not, my mother said that I'm a traitor to the family because I choose another person instead of my sister, who I only talk to a couple times a year, she also threatened me to back out of the wedding financially and emotionally, not that much of a problem, bloody nuisance though. I've told them that my responsibility goes as far as handing them their invites, what they do with it is entirely up to them, but this is our day, and I'm not willing to let anyone guilt trip or blackmail me into choices I don't want to make, this has a long story running in the family regarding the event. Additional info might be that my fiancé is completely with me, as she also loathes the control freak crap in the family and is friends with the guy as well, and my sister's new boyfriend, the old one, also has a problem with the whole thing, not that it matters, but as a point of reference, and culturally we're Central Europeans, so the wedding is not that much of a big deal like a 200-300 guest United States wedding, but for the family and friends means a lot. So, was I right to stand up or should I act along the family's concept? I can't believe the votes on this one. Okay fine, you and your sister aren't close. But she hasn't radically betrayed you or endangered you. She's your sister, and that's pretty crappy that she can't count on you to have her back for something like this. You should have considered situations like this before getting so close to her ex. You are the idiot, I'd be heartbroken if my sibling invited my ex to her wedding and flipped it on me when I expressed my discomfort. But the assumption that ex-boyfriend is a decent guy and your family's response is based on her being uncomfortable due to her own behavior or just regular breakup crap, I'm going to say not the idiot. My brother has been a serial monogamist for 25 plus years, consistently including them at every family occasion. His siblings, I'm one, are still friends with several of his exes, like our oldest sister told him, you made them family, you don't get to erase that. Her envy and jealousy is rearing its ugly head. I wouldn't be at all surprised to find out a lot of that envy is just you getting married at all. Your sister needs to hear the words it is my wedding, not yours. If you have a problem with me inviting a close friend, that makes you the idiot here, not me. Not the idiot. Would just like to preface this by saying I, 37, walked out not in malicious protest, but because I wanted to cool off. So here goes, my wife, 38, and daughter, 11, got into a jokey discussion about alien invasions and apocalyptic situations. Then my daughter asks if my wife would protect her in this situation and my wife says, I love you more than I love anybody else in the world. Yes, she says this in front of me. My wife then puts her arm around my shoulder and goes on to say that her father, aka me, and I would use each other as shields against any danger that comes to her. Meaning she'd gladly sacrifice me. At that point, I picked up my keys and said, gee thanks, go ahead and start lunch without me. My wife suddenly gets self-righteous and says there was no way I could expect to choose a spouse over a kid. I felt like she had just crap on our entire marriage and life vows. And the principle aside, the fact I was furious I think should have been enough to excuse me leaving the house. So I left the house and drove around to cool off. Then I went over to my sister's house because I told her how upset I was and as a result, she and her spouse invited me to have dinner with them. I may have ignored some calls from my wife, but she knew where I was and in addition, I just couldn't see her or be in the house at the moment. I always felt like my wife loved the kids more than me, and it hurts. The fact that she would hypothetically and do casually throw me to the wolves was making me question if I loved her more than she loved me and if so, why I bothered to give her my loyalty. When there could be other women, like my sister, who valued their spouse more than anything. Am I the idiot? Not for my beliefs but for the fact that I took the time to cool off. You are the idiot, dude, you are way overreacting about a stupid hypothetical scenario. What exactly did you want your wife to say to your daughter? Oh of course I wouldn't save you sweetie, and your daddy wouldn't either. We would both let you die, because daddy is the most important person in this house. And yes, storming out of the house like a child and refusing to answer the phone makes you even more of an idiot than getting your fee-fees hurt because you think you should be put before your child. 
was your wife supposed to tell your daughter oh, sweetie, if an alien invasion comes, you're on your own because I love your father more than you? What were you really expecting from that conversation? Also, you got mad about your wife choosing your daughter over you in a conversation about a hypothetical alien invasion that didn't include you in any way, seriously, grow up. So just to be clear, your plan in an alien invasion is to use your 11-year-old daughter as a human shield to save yourself. And you want your wife to be on board with that plan. Cool. It's already dumb as hell to try and rank your love for various people in that way. But if you're not actually willing to put your life on the line to save your kid if it came down to it, I am very concerned about you as a parent. First of all, I have always encouraged and advocated for healthy and close mother-daughter relationships and have never discouraged neither my wife or daughter from each other. But I've been noticing things for years now and after beating around the bush for such a long time, I decided to bring it up to my wife. For maybe around three years now, she's been treating my daughter way differently than our sons, whether it be about fairly innocuous things like serving her first at mealtimes or by hugging her goodnight, but not our sons. On birthdays and Christmas, my wife gets our daughter enough presents to nearly send us into bankruptcy, but refuses to allow me to do the same with the boys. There have been times where our sons come up to her, asking for her to come and see a picture one of them drew or a toy they discovered under the couch, and my wife will ignore them until they give up. My daughter will come up, asking for her to play, and my wife agrees immediately. I've tried to pick up the slack with our sons, while still spending time with our daughter, but my wife accuses me of favoritism. Two days ago, my oldest son came up to me and asked why mommy didn't love us anymore, and that was the last straw. After they went to bed, I asked my wife to come and sit down with me and said that I love she had a great relationship with our daughter, but that she barely pays any attention to our sons and that it was putting a strain on the whole family. She said that I was being ridiculous and nitpicking, that there was no such thing going on, and after accusing me, once again, of favoritism, she made me sleep on the couch. We've been playing nice for the kid's sake, but I still see how special she treats our daughter and how horribly she treats our sons, while also wondering if I'm at fault for any of this and if I went about it the wrong way. Not the idiot. She needs therapy. Could be medical, emotional or even something she grew up with thinking this is how you treat them after a certain age, or maybe she had brothers who got treated better than her and she is dealing with it this way. Maybe something happened with the sons or one of them or with the daughter that triggered it but it isn't right. Maybe you should take a video showing her doing it to get her to face it. This is pretty disturbing, and you had to bring it up. You brought it up in the best way you could have. Her reaction is on her. Don't let it drop. I think therapy, for both of you, would be a good idea. Make sure you have specific instances of favoritism in mind, rather than just saying she always, and tell the therapist that your oldest believes she doesn't love her sons anymore. I hope this works out. I am gonna go against the grain here and say everyone's the idiot here. Your wife for obvious reasons, she should love each of her children equally and not show favoritism. But, given that you had noticed these issues earlier, I would say that you should have stepped in before your son had to ask you why his mother doesn't love them anymore. I hope you and your children are able to come out of this soon and happy. All the best. My sister and her son, age 9, are currently staying with me and my wife and our kids, 10, 13, 15, but my sister and nephew will be moving out by August at the latest. They moved in early February. My nephew doesn't have any conditions or anything like that, but he has a very short list of favorite foods, and my sister goes out of her way to accommodate this by buying him his own meals, which he has while everyone else eats a different meal, egg on Friday, everyone else had fish and chips, and he had pizza. Aside from this my nephew doesn't like being told no and is very quick to upset and anger. My sister uses the never say no parenting method which is meant to entail saying no because and then explain the consequences, but instead she's taken it literally and just never says no to anything. My sister had to go to her workplace in person yesterday from 8-4. She asked me to look after her son and I agreed. Everyone in the house wakes up whenever they naturally wake up, my wife is the only one who currently needs to be up by a certain time, and everyone just had toaster cereal or yogurt, but when my nephew woke he asked if I could make him pancakes. I was working, so I said no. He got upset and I told him the other food we had available, but he stormed off to his room, saying it wasn't fair he didn't get to eat. I make a full English for lunch. 
bacon, sausages, eggs, beans, tomatoes, etc. all in the pans so people can dish up what they do and don't want. I call everyone to come eat and when my nephew gets there he says he wants chicken nuggets. I tell him this is what I've cooked, but give him some alternatives that don't require me cooking a whole other meal, including the breakfast foods listed earlier plus Pop-Tarts. He says again he wants nuggets, I say I'm not making nuggets. He storms off again, saying the same stuff about not getting to eat as earlier. I know for a fact that bacon, sausages, and beans are all foods he eats, as are Pop-Tarts and the junk food we have on hand, so I'm pretty sure that was just him being stubborn. Anyway, my sister got home around 4 and my nephew asks her to make him a pizza because he's starving. She then finds out that he hasn't eaten all day. He says he asked me for chicken nuggets and pancakes, and I said no. I said that I did say no, because we had other food available, and he wouldn't eat what I cooked. My sister says I still should have cooked what he asked for. My wife agrees in theory that he shouldn't be throwing tantrums over not getting separate meals, but says that if she'd realized he hadn't eaten all day, she was in her office and I brought food into her, she would have told me to just make the damn nuggets. That was yesterday and my sister has been passive-aggressive all day, talking loudly about how she's going to make him extra special pancakes, because you must be starving, same again at lunch. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot, this kid sounds like a total brat. His mother better change her parenting style quick because by the time he's a teenager, he'll be walking all over her and won't give a damn. Now it's just pancakes and chicken nuggets, but as he gets older that'll turn into, I'm staying out all night and you can't tell me to come home. Type stuff. There are children literally dying of starvation all over the world. He should be grateful he has a good family that puts food on the table. This is just my opinion, but I'm speaking from personal experience. The kid is too old for this kind of behavior, and it's wrong for his mother to enable this kind of thing. You gave options and he rejected them. That's on him not you. She needs to teach her kid that he won't always get his way. Did you explain to him why you weren't making him pancakes? He may not understand why you couldn't or just think that you didn't for the sake of not making them as it sounds like he always gets what he wants from his mom. He's a spoiled brat and your sister is ruining him for the real world. I was raised as you eat what the family eats or you don't eat. Now I eat everything. I have a cousin that for decades was allowed to dictate their diet as mashed potatoes, chicken nuggets and corn. He's a total entitled idiot that no one in the family talks to anymore. If your sister expects a babysitter to follow a child's orders, she should hire a babysitter and set that expectation. Their responsibility as his uncle is help raise him right. Screw your idiot sister.